Hey everybody, I'm Amanda Day, and we are talking about a documentary we're very, very excited to screen here in a few minutes. And I'm here with Frank M. White. He wrote this book, They Played for the Love of the Game, and he has graciously agreed to share some of his stories and tell us also why you were attracted to these mostly untold stories. Um, Amanda, I think the biggest reason is to, to play honor to those individuals. One of them was my father, and so that maybe might have been the, the spur or whatever to get things started or the trigger. However, in my research, and then I used to get to go with my father and watch him play. Wow. So some of the guys I knew, and, and then I knew that they would travel up into Canada and, and barnstorm all over the five state area here. Can you explain barnstorming? Because I sort of know what that means. Um, somebody told me that barnstorming actually started with circuses. And it's, it's so barnstorming for baseball would have been teams would go and play different teams throughout Minnesota, Wisconsin, Canada, and they would, in the barnstorming teams, this would be a way for them to make money. Okay. And, and, and the split would be 60% of the gate if you won, 40% if you lost. So <laughs> Good incentive. Yeah, so obviously teams were trying to win. Mm -hmm. And in barnstorming, like today, you know, the twins might have 25 guys on the roster. If you were barnstorming, you were only taking like 10, 11, maybe 12 players because wow. fewer players, bigger the split, right? right? So, so back in those days, you didn't play one position, you played multiple positions, wow. depending upon who you were going to play and, and, and how many games you played. So. What a beautiful and, and personal relationship to these stories. What? When you think about your dad, what do you, has he passed? He has. Okay. What, what do you remember most about him? Uh, first of all, my father was, was an outstanding baseball player. And let me give him a little plug. In 1946, when he graduated from Mechanic Arts High School in St. Paul, he won the batting title. And there were a number of high schools back then, not a few like today. But he won the batting title by hitting 600. That's still a record today. So you really? know, wow. so guys today are winning the batting titles, hitting three, three oh five, three twenty. So if you can imagine, six hundred, wow. and that is stood the test of time. I mean, forty six, and this is two thousand seventeen. So Sounds think, like you're throwing out a challenge there. <laughs> and that could be. Um, I, but I think for me, uh, growing up. Base, playing baseball first. I, I was the first game that I played. I enjoyed playing it, and and I tell people that you know I used to get to uh, to go with my dad, and and I the, some of my fondest memories are in March with snow still on the ground, playing catch with my father. In fact, I tell people I can see him right now. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad would throw this way, I would throw that way. My dad would hold the bat this way, I would hold it. But I think the fun thing was I get to go see him play and the guys that he played with and the teams that he played against. And there were some outstanding baseball players and I can remember back to some of the, the images, the visions of some of these guys that played and they were just outstanding. And, and so for me, I think that was part of the inspiration again for the book was nobody knows about these guys. Yeah. And, and fortunately, I got a chance to interview some of them before they passed away. So some of my research was actually directly from them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and along the way, I, I hit, a, hit the wall a couple of times. And uh, my wife and friends said, you know, if you don't finish this, that history is going to be lost forever. So That's what Bob was saying, is that this is about a generation that very soon we're not going to be able to have anyone to talk to. So how amazing that you were able to capture their stories. Where can we, where can we pick up the book? Um, you can get it Amazon at uh, Amazon at all of Browns and Noble stores. Most of the uh, bookstores in, in the metro area and the Minnesota History Center is the publisher, so you can awesome. get it at any of their places. So everywhere. Just I mean, once you say Amazon, you're like, okay, <laughs> two-day shipping. Yes. Thank you so much for telling the story. I'm sure it was not an easy thing to find all that research and talk to people. I'm sure it was quite an amazing journey, but we really appreciate people like you that know there needs to be a story that's told. I mean, film is all about storytelling, and 
we draw so much of our inspiration from books. So thank you again for being here. It's a really, really special thing. Thank you, Amanda, so much for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, guys.